Our Father, we thank you for that message we have had already from our young people. No, no, no. There's no turning back. We pray, O oh Lord, the grace to so decide and to so determine and to be so resolute that there will be no turning back. Whatever the attack, whatever the surprise, whatever the enemy might try to do, whatever the temptation or the trial, help us, Lord, that as we stand for the truth, we'll never compromise, we'll never turn back, we'll stand for the truth for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that today you'll open the pages of the scriptures to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to understand. Help us to determine and to decide that what we understand, we're going to practice. And that your truth will go out through us in Jesus' name. The spirit of compromise. Cast it out from every heart. And that tendency for self-will and stubbornness, crush it. Well, the hammer of your word, crush it from every life in Jesus' name. Whatever form it may take, whatever shape it may take, get rid of it from our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Is the Lord blessing you in this conference? Really, really blessing you. Are you still expecting more from the Lord? Praise the Lord. And this morning we're looking at the teaching of the Word of God. I'm speaking to you on uprooting, compromise, and self will. Uprooting, compromise and self-will as we look at this the question we ought to ask ourselves is what is god's attitude towards compromise when god sees an individual a family a church a denomination compromising the truth of the word what is God's attitude very clear? God stands by His word from generation to generation, at all times, in whichever place. Almighty God, who exalts His word above His name, he stands by His word. And if there is any deviation, if there is any compromise, if there is any diluting of the world, if there is any modification of the mind of God, the will of God, the word of God, God hates it. So, it is something he has not planted in your heart. It's something he has not brought up in your family it is something he does not desire he does not want in his church he wants everyone that names the name of christ to run away as far as possible from compromise and of course self-will what self-will another word for that is stubbornness what self-will it is to exalt self above almighty God. It is to create a conflict, a war between your little self and the great, supreme, infinite, illimitable God. And for you to take the side of Satan, Lucifer, that came up with self-will and said i will exalt my throne above the throne of god you understand god has many names and he has many titles and when lucifer 
was going to talk about i will exalt my throne above the throne of god he chose the title of god that shows that god is almighty all sufficient supreme the most high and then he said i will that's a self-will exalt my throne i don't care what god says that's what i was saying i don't care what position god has that's what he was saying i don't care what authority god has that's what he was saying i don't care what position everybody the angels have put that almighty god i don't care about his attribute his nature whatever he is whatever he has i will exalt my throne above the throne of the most high and when when you see self-will in anyone any family any local church any city church any section of the church where you see self-will you know god has abandoned that individual that section that local church because the moment self-will came up in the heart of lucifer and you know lucifer had even managed by his cleverness and craft to take one third of the angels with him and god said i don't care how many angels we're not talking of 10 angels because we're talking of one third if it's only 10 angels it means there are only 30 angels we're not talking of 100 if it's only 100 angels it means that there are only 300 angels we're not talking of one million angels because it's only one million it means there are only three million angels he took one third innumerable many and god's i don't care how many those angels are that support satan lucifer and they have that self-will i'm going to cast them out and he cast them out that shows you that no matter how large a church is no matter how large a section of the church is when there is compromise and self-will god says that's it that's it because he hates that sin because it originated from lucifer satan the devil diabolos that's the reason why we need to examine our hearts and examine ourselves and find out if there is compromise there if there is self-will there i will do what i want i will preach what i want i will go where i want who can stop me let that pastor rise up and discipline me i will show him who i am i will show him that i can convince many many people to follow me we will break the church go ahead and do it god is not going to compromise with you and say because you have the ability by your self-will by your stubbornness and you have the ability to take one third of the church away if the leadership of the church does not accept your false doctrine you'll break the church go ahead and do it god is still going to tell you he doesn't want compromise self-will in his church that's the reason why if you love god and if you fear the judgment of god you want to examine your heart your life this morning and you want him to uproot and he will do it i said he will do it you want him to uproot compromise self-will away from your heart away from your life in matthew chapter 15 matthew chapter 15 verse 13 
And he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted, tell me the rest. Uh, wonderful. You know, our children are young people. I'm sorry, young people. I, I keep on calling you children. Of course, they are our children. Our youth, our youth choir, they sang to us last night, no worry, no anxiety. They just said, no worry, no fear. I added anxiety. I think they, because I always need those three things. You understand? One, two, three. When I say worry, when I say fear, that's true. I add my third one. I say no worry, no anxiety, no fear. You know, Jesus had said something. He had taught something. And the Pharisees became offended. And the disciples were anxious, worried fearful and he came do you know verse 12 that the pharisees were offended after they heard this teaching this saying this utterance this saying you said oh he said leave them alone every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up that means then compromise which God has not planted in the church, self will, stubbornness, which God has not planted in the church, God is going to make sure because of his love for his church, because of the sacrifice of his only begotten son, because of the price of redemption, because of the purpose of God for the church, because of the final triumph of truth over error because the very heart of god the very glory of god the very image of god is attached to what the church becomes because god has no other sin that represents him on earth except the church he started with israel that's what he had on earth to show his glory to reveal his praises but then israel went off and now they said i turn to the gentiles now we have the church and the only thing god has on earth that interests him the only thing god has on earth that reveals his glory the only thing god has on earth why are you still looking on the earth to show any favor is the church and if there is anything that will cause compromise in that church self-will in that church that's something god has not planned god is going to do everything 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 that he has in his power to root that thing out every plant that my heavenly father has not planted is going to root that thing out uprooting compromise and self will now in jeremiah chapter one jeremiah chapter one uh, for you to understand how god works the plan of the work of god for you to understand the purpose why he raises up individual evangelists and preachers and prophets and pastors and ministers for you to understand why he raises up some churches and a church like this jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10 see i have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to do what to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down and then after that to build and to plant six things one root out two pull down three destroy four throw down five build six plant it's like jeremiah you look at israel not only israel look at the nations jeremiah you say you are young you say you are unintelligent you say you're weak but i've raised you up and I put my word in your mouth. And I have a special ministry for you. And that special ministry is Jeremiah. Listen. Not only the children of Israel. 
the nations have raised you up to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and then jeremiah has a negative part then for you to build and for you to plant there is no preacher called of god that will not have a time in his congregation there's no preacher called of god there's no time he will not have the time among his workers to root out there are times you need to root out and there are things to root out and there's no time and there's no preacher no leader that will live many years walk many years and be with workers and be with leaders other leaders and carry on ministry and then he will never root out of course and there are times he needs to pull some things down there are times he needs to destroy some things and there are times he needs to throw them down and then after he's done all that he now knows compromise is rooted out self-will is rooted out before that time look up here look up here look up here teachers preachers ministers if compromise is there in the congregation if self-will is there in the congregation and you say i don't want to touch that area you know i've just decided in my life now i'm going to just just be loving and i don't want to be negative i don't want to be negative all i want to do now just encourage people edify people build up people you just just help them self-will i i don't want to touch that area because the people they're so stubborn that, that's the present generation the present generation you know stubbornness and self-will is there what can you do what can anybody do I, I don't want to touch that i just want to you know gather the people i'm telling you you'll never build something for the almighty god never never if you are going to build and you are going to plant you are going to surrender yourself into the hands of God and you are going to say yes I know yes I know yes I know what it will take I will start by uprooting and destroying and pulling down and throwing down it's when that is done the Lord then calls you and he says now you can build now you can plant you see all the we're talking about youth ministry we're talking about children's ministry and if you know anything about young people today at home they start at home i will do what i like daddy no more this ancient old ideas this is modern time dad if you don't allow me to do what i'm going to do i will leave the house for you go ahead and leave the house go and sleep under the bridge or the mosquitoes mom if you don't allow me to have a boyfriend i'm telling you i'm going to leave and then i'm even going to leave with that boy you say you don't go ahead go ahead and catch aids hiv at a young age and die prematurely it's in the children and if you as leaders and if you as youth teachers if you accept if you permit if you condone if you tolerate compromise and self-will in the youth ministry you destroy those children that's why the lord is telling you and you are the jeremiah here root out destroy throw down and it is when you have done all that and you pull all those things down that should not be there now you can build in the lives of the children in the lives of the young people and the things we're talking about they're not they're not necessarily big 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 things 
in songs of solomon chapter 2 verse 15 songs of solomon chapter 2 verse 15 take us the little foxes the little foxes that spoil the vines for our vines have tender grapes take us remove away from us root out of us out of our midst away from our hearts those little 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 foxes because it's little drops of water that make a mighty ocean is the addition that becomes multiplication because two plus two plus two plus two eventually becomes two times four it is the little addition every day of disobedience of compromise of self-will of stubbornness that becomes a multiplication and complication of the lives of those people and that's the reason why i uh, so come over here you don't want to just have a teacher's conference that you know will just smile with you and laugh with you and all the sins iniquities and carelessness and compromise and self-will and stubbornness there will just leave you alone don't disturb anybody don't disturb anybody just love them build up and plan there's something to root out and the lord will do it this morning the three points we're looking at in the message number one exhortation against compromise and self-will exhortation against compromise and self-will number two examples of compromise and self-will examples of compromise and self-will number three the end of compromisers and the self-willed the self-willed self-willed people the end of compromisers and the self-willed number one exhortation against compromise and self-will if there is anything we learn from the word of god it is that we're enjoined we're cautioned we're advised we're admonished we're exhorted not to allow compromise and self-will in our lives in ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 there we read in verse 14 ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sledge of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive and as exhortation against compromise that you come to the lord you believe the word of the lord and that word has a cleansing power transformational power a renewing power in your life and then you understand that when you become a convert you are not to remain a convert you are to become a disciple learner learning the word of god Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now it says, learn of me. You keep on learning. Go, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you till the end of the world. That means then... After you become a Christian, after you become a child of God, you are a disciple, you are learning and learning and learning. And you learn to the point you are solid. 
you are established on the foundation of the word of God. And then it says, there's something you want to watch against. And that is compromise that we henceforth from now on be no more children children in understanding children in conviction children in our practice children in our emotion children in what attracts us toys attract children worthless things of no value but colorful attract children singing dancing drumming they attract children and it tells us that you will not be so low after years of coming to the lord learning from the lord that you will be no more children that will be tossed to and fro that if somebody comes and he says this thing in my hand is black and he turns the black side the person believes and then if you turn it around the thing is actually blue then that side is blue and say oh yes oh yes when you say black he accepts when you say blue he accepts i doesn't know it's the same thing tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine three years ago children in the faith this is what they believed two years after this is what they believed next year you cannot predict what they are going to believe that there will be no such compromise in your life so that you will not be like children tossed to and fro and if you took any decision here by the time you get over there outside saturday morning and in the afternoon of saturday you meet somebody where are you coming from i went to such and such a place what did they tell you there then you give some testimonies so sit down and washes off everything tells you some lies and put some scriptures upside down and joins everything you say oh i'm sorry i didn't know it's like that i believe you this is what i now accept that we no more be children that after we've been taught line upon line precept upon precept over here then we go out there and then you are blown off you are blown away shifted away from your foundation where you were established because of every wind of doctrine but the slate of men the cunning craftiness people are crafty people are deceptive whereby they lie in wait they are waiting for you waiting for you lie in wait to deceive and that's why we're told in hebrews chapter 13 hebrews 13 verse 9 be not carried about of diverse and strange doctrines don't compromise is the exhortation against compromise be not carried about with every wind of doctrine diverse strange doctrines you meet some people who have been in deeper life and i say it not because i'm happy I say it was sorrow. We have um, a, a young, uh, young man, beloved. I just, I loved that brother in Lagos here. And he even became a, a group, I think, a group coordinator. Or if he was not, I just rated him in my mind like a group coordinator here in Lagos and uh, if i wanted if i needed somebody to teach and to preach and and to just help us open the bible analyze the bible preach the bible i will i will think about him some years ago when a whole church gave themselves up in lagos here land members everything I, I called that brother because they said now we want to be deeper life completely completely 
I called, I knew that that brother, I said, he will, he will teach them. And I said, brother, come. Keep on to your district and then go to this other place and teach them. They say they want deeper life, give it to them. And he went and did his best. But later, he came to me and he wrote and they always write good they always write well my dear father i praise god everything i know today i praise the lord you have taught me i appreciate you but the lord is calling me now to do something don't let this pain your heart this is God and we tried our best to tell him see my brother something if you stay here something lies ahead of you great things where are you going who said because God said we I tried to send some people to influence the wife so that the wife will remain i felt that if the wife remained that eventually this man when things are not moving well the wife will pull him back and the wife said me follow any man outside this church where i learned everything knew every never don't worry about me let him go i'm here and we're happy a few months after she stopped coming to church and went with the man but oh the devil is bad this young man eventually grew beard very bushy hair very bushy and he wrote to me and said now i am apostle and prophet and when he came, he was wild. At looking at him, I said, what? And then he sat down and said, you got my letter that now I am apostle and prophet. I said, yes, I got your letter. He said, now I'm going about teaching people how to pray and how to receive from God. I was sad but i still loved him and i still I, I called another group coordinator i said go after him run after him this man is losing his life is losing his mind is losing everything you know strange diverse doctrines you will think it can never happen to you and you will think it will never happen to so and so it can happen that's why when i come in here that's why we're making all this noise so that by the grace of god you will not compromise you will not go off and you will not say i can manage myself you cannot manage yourself please anything i say here i don't go out there and insult people don't, don't if you if anybody here in lagos if you happen to know the person i'm talking about don't go to him and insult him respect him and love him and appreciate him and you know cry and weep and pray and shake his hand embrace him and say you know whatever god wants you to do will love you please why don't you come back don't don't go to them and tell them you know the pastor spoke about they'll be unhappy they'll be sad they'll be angry they will not come i'm only telling you so as to help you a beloved and not a beloved state overseer great great brother many years ago many years in fact I, i'll tell you some some years ago prayerful i'm telling you prayerful and i when he came, if he came to me in the late 80s early 90s and he told me that god is saying why don't we do this 
Yes, I will pray about it, but even before I pray, I will almost accept. It was a walk with God. And it was a state overseer. And we, we made some changes in the 90s, around 1990, 1991. And we, you know, put him somewhere. But it so happened that the people, you know, he came from one state as a state overseer, went to another state. And this state was bigger than his former state. He didn't know how to handle the people. The people were, you know, they were not very gentle with him. Eventually, he, he said, he was leaving. I said, my brother, you cannot leave. I said, don't you love me? I said, if you leave, it's going to cut off something. From, you cannot leave. You know how much we are to. How can you? He said, those people are not accepting. I said, trust me. I am the leader. I'm going to talk to those people. I will bring them to submission under your leadership. And eventually, he still decided, it's a long story, to leave. And his wife came with him. And this was the wife. I, if, you know, there are some women in the church. Because I knew them before they were married. I counseled them before they were married those days. Before I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I'll think about that sister. And she looked at me and smiled and said, Sir, the Lord is leading my husband and I. Uh, I said, I called her name. I always called her by the first name because I knew her very well. I said, So and so, you are doing like this. She said, It's God's will. They left. Don't, don't go and tell these people what I'm saying. They'll be unhappy. They say, okay, if that's what deeper life is saying, I will never come. We want them to still come, love them, pray for them. But the point is this now. This, my beloved former state overseer who left and went to, started his own ministry. I'm telling you, man, that man can pray. That man can pray. And when he talks about Operation Bulldozer, that man, oh no, Bulldozer. But the thing is now, he has divorced that wife, <laughs> married another wife, and is still preaching. You see, what we are telling you is so that these things will not happen. If you hear somebody is going, and you say that Jesus is crying, is running after them, is begging them, and they are telling you he's begging us, am my reason for begging them? It's not because, you know, that, you know, I'm looking for members. It's because I pity them. It's today you see what will happen tomorrow. That's the point. That's why the Lord cautions you, warns you against compromise and self-will. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meat which have not profited them that have been occupied therein proverbs chapter one proverbs chapter one verse ten my son if sinners entice thee Consent thou not. If they want you to compromise, don't give in, don't accept. Consent thou not. And the Lord is just saying, is telling us, don't get involved with compromise. Stand on the unchanging truth of the word of God. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings. Chapter 18, verse 21. Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. What could they say? The Lord is telling us that we should stand firm in the teaching of the word of God. I pray you all stand. You will not compromise. 
And then he talks about self-will in Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you, any of you, any of you, be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. There are times when you, something is deceiving you, attracting you. And we're trying to help you. And you said, no. You're hiding your heart. Self-will. Didn't I tell you that I just came from Togo? Last Saturday, we had youth program there. Similar to say 2001. And this girl. Now in. I think in the late 20s. She made attempt to see me on Friday. And things were quite busy. Then on Saturday eventually she, she was able to see me. Good girl. And. She said. You know. When I started living promiscuous life, promiscuous, promiscuous life, and that means careless, immoral life, my mother called me. My mother said, My daughter, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And she said, Mom, leave me alone, let me live my life. The junior sister to the mother, everybody, they rejected her. They said, if you are living this kind of life, she's a Nigerian. And she, but she's living in a French-speaking country. And she took up all the worldliness, immorality, fornication of that, of that area where she was living. They said, don't do this. You can't do this. The mother born again, deeper life member in that country. She, she was pleading with this girl, crying. Eventually, I don't know whether it's the sorrow, the, the, the heartache. The mother died. But she told the mother, she said, Mom, don't worry. You're talking about hell? Is it not people that are there? Is it animals that are there, Mom? Is it not human beings? I'll go there. No problem. You mean, eventually after the mother died, she looked at her life. This boy had misused her. That boy had misused her. That boy had misused her. You know, she was just available for any boy. And she now thought about the shame and the sorrow of her life. And she all the pressure that the mother was putting on her and she went to that same deeper life in that country and she repented in tears and became born again but she thought she was going lean beauty gone skin changed everything bad then she went to check up with the doctors and they said, you have full, blown, complete, matured age at the latter stage. And she came to see me last Saturday saying, see, I brought this on myself. I could have avoided this, but I hadn't my heart. I wanted self-will. Now my life is shattered. And I cannot see those boys anymore. They've gone to other ladies. I'm abandoned. No help. No partner. Nobody. That's why I'm telling you. Tell these young people. Tell them. Tell them. That self-will will ruin their lives. So that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. 
and you are saying i don't care of course you care why wouldn't you care you care lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin for in verse 14 we are made partakers of christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end but uh, there are people that compromise point number two examples of compromise and self-will examples of compromise and self-will sometimes it happens with a leader and when it happens with a leader and you compromise it will affect the whole church it will affect uh, the, the group you are leading the young people you are leading if there's compromise in your life as a leader if you cannot stand on the truth whatever the consequence in exodus chapter 32 Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not where what not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, you want an idol you want a god i wasn't thinking about that but that's all right that's all right break of the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them to me and all the people break of the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto aaron and he received them at their hand and fashioned each with a graving tool after he had made each after that after he had made each a molten cow and he said these be thy god so israel which brought thee up out of the land of egypt you, you see the problem here the people said moses what has happened to him this man was caring for them it was because of them the lord called him and the lord called him to the mountain top to receive the law the law that will guide them the law that will reshape them the law that will transform them the law that will make them different from all the other nations the lord that will show how god cared for them and directed and led them in the way they should go that's where moses went and then the people said as for this moses we don't know what is become of him what will become of him in the presence of god what will become of him in the under the power of the almighty god what's going to become of him he went to the lord he was with the lord he didn't die and he told those elders before he went and so they said aaron you are the one there rise up make us a god an idol that's what we want and he didn't even try to convince them didn't even try to exhort them, change their mind, teach them, instruct them. Oh, he said, you want a God? How can we do it now? All right. Break off the earrings in your, eye, in your ears. Bring them and we'll see what to do. And he carefully worked on that thing and became a golden calf. And these people, these people, can you imagine brought out by the power of the almighty god they said these are thy gods O israel that brought you out of the land of egypt in verse 5 and when aaron saw it high priest the high priest of god he built an altar before it and aaron made proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast of the lord 
see how they are mocking God. And he rose up early in the morning on the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, go, get thee down. For thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Verse 9, the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people. Behold, it's a stiff-necked people. That's the stubbornness. That's the self-will. That's the hardening of the heart. That's a compromise too. And eventually, Moses, after pleading with them, he came back. When he came back, he challenged Aaron. Verse 21, Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people, that they are set on mischief. And this, for this said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this, Moses, the man that brought us up, out of the land of Egypt, we know not for what not, what is become of him. And then he was afraid what they will do to him. And since he was afraid what they will do to him, then that's why he made the gods for them. Leaders who are afraid of the reaction of their members, their workers. Ah, if you preach it like that, those members will not like it. Are they to like it? Are we to like it? When the hammer of the word comes on us, who likes that? They are not to like it, they are to believe it. And they are to repent of their sins and turn to the Lord. But because he couldn't stand, and when a leader cannot stand, stand on the truth. This unchanging word of God, when a leader cannot stand, it will bring compromise, it will destroy all those people. And the same thing you're finding another another leader in First Samuel. For Samuel, chapter 15. I'm reading to you from verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this, bleat, this bleating of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen? Which I hear. Oh, and Saul said, no big deal, no big deal. They brought them from the Amalekites for the people, spare the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. They always have excuses, reasons. Uh, they say, you know, it's not that we want to change. Uh, the way the messages have been going and the way the ministry has been going is inconvenient for the people, it's hard on the people, it's not helping the people. Uh, the pastor, the leader is so far away, he doesn't live with the people, he doesn't understand what they are going through. And the reason we are doing this and the reason we are pleading that there should be compromise. Hey, let's reach a compromise. Let there be a change. How could, how will a leader be so unreasonable and be so rigid? The reason we're asking is that we, it's for the glory of our God. So that it will be convenient for the people. And the people will come. And the image of the church, the world will like the church. And the, the people that are, they want, they like deeper life. They want to come. 
Only that, you know, this rigidity, this, you know, it must be like this. If it is not like this, it's not good. Let, it, let us change it. And it's for the glory of God. And that's what Saul said. We brought them back. We disobeyed. We have a reason for the disobedience. It is so that we can sacrifice it to the Lord your God. God doesn't need your disobedience for his glory. And then in verse 16, Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, stop, keep quiet. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed the king over Israel, and the Lord sent thee on a journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, and didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, yea i have obeyed the voice of the lord and i have gone the way which the lord sent me and i brought agag the king of the amalek of amalek and i've utterly destroyed the amalekites but the people i couldn't control the people because i couldn't control them that's what they wanted the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the sheep of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. I knew it, but the reason they gave me is to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. When they mentioned that, that's why I gave in. That's why I surrendered. Because they said, this is for the glory of God. For the service of God. And then, as in obeying, uh, the next verse now, and Samuel said, As the Lord great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold Saul and every leader here, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hacking and the fat of France. So rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft, stubbornness, self will, is iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. What a pity. Examples of compromise and self will. We've seen the example of Aaron. We've seen the example of Saul. But sometimes it's not even just an individual. It's a group of people. In Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. Reading there in verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. And he told Jeremiah, talk about insubordination. This is it. Talk about self-will. This is it. Talk about open, flagrant rebellion. Here it is. And talk about a kind of self-will which is not hidden, which is open. Here it is. As for the word that thou hast spoken to us, in the name of the Lord, even though it's in the name of the Lord, we're telling you, we will not hearken unto thee. But, verse 17, we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem. 
But then had we plenty of victuals and we were well and saw no evil. And they look at material things. Because when we did that and we disobeyed, see the good, good things we had. We had jobs, we passed our exams, we were well, everything was all right. What you are telling us now, we're not going to obey. Verse 22. So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings, because of the abominations which ye have committed, therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment as at this day. You see, the judgment came upon them. And that's why we need to avoid this uh, kind of attitude. This compromise and self-will. Unfortunately for the children of Israel, what I read to you in chapter 44 wasn't the first time. It started long ago. In G Jeremiah chapter 6, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. But the Lord still loved them. He said, Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Somebody told them the truth. The prophet of God, the preacher of the truth, he told them the truth. But they said, that's all right. We hear what you say, but we're not going to do it. Verse 17, also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hacking to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hack in. Rebellion is not a new thing. It's as old as Satan. And since the beginning of the world, Satan has been influencing people so that they can rebel. And when you have compromise and self-will, you are not. It's not just you. It's not just you. It's not just you. It's Satan behind it. In chapter seven of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter seven, verse twenty-three. But this thing commanded I them, saying, "Obey my voice, and I will be your God." And ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but they walked in the, in, in the counsels, in the imagination of their evil heart. They went backward, not forward, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt until this day I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets rising up early and sending them yet they hearkened not unto me nor inclined their ear but hardened their neck they did worse than their fathers but thou shalt say unto them in verse 28 this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. But uh, the, the Lord obviously is not happy whenever there is compromise, self-will, stubbornness. In Zechariah chapter 7, Zechariah chapter 7 verses 11 and 12 but they refused to hurt him they pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear yea they made their hearts as an adamant stone they did it they did it when their conscience corrected them and said but this is not right. Leave me alone. When somebody else said, uh -uh, 
you are not like this before. I is it like this? How was I? What's the difference? What change have you seen? Are you, accusing, are you calling me a backslider? Leave me alone. When preachers came and preachers said this, you see, that's how they talk. That's how, or how they always talk. And eventually, little by little by little, your heart became hardened. And it says in that verse 12, it's they that have made their hearts as hard as an adamant stone. Lest they shall hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. And that means that they never got away with sage. Because I told you from the beginning that God hates compromise. And he hates self-will. Because anytime God sees stubbornness and self-will, he remembers Lucifer. He remembers Satan. That's how Satan did it. And when it's in you, uh, that's the same thing that is coming up again. Now I come to point number three. The end of compromises and the self-willed. In Proverbs chapter 24, Proverbs chapter 24, reading from verse 20. For there, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. That's why he now tells us, my son, in verse 21, fear thou the Lord and the king. You hear that? Not only fear the Lord, fear the Lord and the king. If you fear the Lord only, and you say, I don't fear the king, you rebel against God because it is God that has established law and order and authority and put king on the nation. If you say, I obey the Lord, I don't care about what the leader in the church said, you're still disobeying the Lord. It is the Lord that put the leader in the church. Feed the flock of God which is among you, over whom the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. It's the Lord that appointed them. So you cannot just say, me, I fear the Lord, I don't care what the pastor says. Fear the Lord and the king. On the other hand, if you fear the king and you don't fear the Lord, it will be high service. It will be hypocrisy. It will be superficial. It will mean that you are just worshipping man. You are not worshipping God. So it is not fear God, disrespect the leader, or fear the leader and disobey the Lord. No, you fear the Lord and you fear the king and then it says in in the latter part of verse that verse 21 and meddle not with them that are given to change meddle not with them that are given to change that means the people that have now abandoned themselves to change and they say new ministry change of doctrine change of worship style change of emphasis change of interpretation of the bible meddle not with them that are given to change in verse 22 because for their calamities suddenly i'm not the one that said that is the word of god and because you know sometimes when you when you read the bible they say the pastor is cursing me no how can i curse you am i may do not of them that are given to change for their calamity those who are given to change if you follow them if you do as they do and you backslide with them and you compromise with them and you become stubborn because of the influence of their self-will, their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin of them both 
if you if you continue with them look at this look at this in second chronicles second chronicles chapter 18 second chronicles chapter 18 from verse 1 now jehoshaphat a good king had riches and honor in abundance and he joined affinity with ahab a bad evil wicked sinful idolatrous king and after certain years he went down to ahab to samaria and ahab killed sheep and all sin for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, the king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered, I am as thou art. Jehoshaphat, you are telling a lie. That's not true. And my people are as thy people. Jehoshaphat, that's a lie. That's flattery. It's not true. And we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee. And the word of the Lord today. Jehoshaphat, do you see now that you are not the same? If you didn't tell this man to ask from the Lord, he doesn't care for the will of God. He doesn't want to find out what the will of the Lord is. And you are to tell him, Inquire, I pray thee at the mouth, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore, king, the king of Israel gathered together prophets, 400 men, and said unto them, Shall we go to remote Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, go up for the Lord God will deliver it into thine hand. Do you see that? 400 prophets saying the same thing. Maybe you go somewhere and you see them prophesying and they all say the same. You say they are united here. In fact they are not even as united as where I'm coming from. And since they are united, is this not of God? Jehoshaphat said he doubted these 400 prophets, singing the praise of the king. And he said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, just one man, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The name, the same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Call him. Let's hear what he will say. And that fellow came. And he told them the watch of the Lord. After telling them, Jehoshaphat shouldn't have gone with with this Ahab, but in verse 28, so the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. He almost lost his life. They almost killed him in the battle. Because the, the king Ahab, these people of the world, they're they crafty, clever. He said, leave your robe of royalty. Leave it on. For me, I will dress like ordinary person because at this time i just want to be humble so put on your clothes when then they go to the battlefield and the enemy saw somebody the only one person they saw dressing like a king they said that is ahab shoot him and then they all surrounded him and he cried he said no I only followed him. Oh, I'm not. I'm not Ahab. And they said this one. This one is not talking like Ahab. And then somebody just drew a spear, an arrow. Just they said chance struck Ahab. Ahab died. And was shame. Jehoshaphat came back home. Chapter nineteen, verse one and verse two. And Je Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, returned to his house in peace. That means they didn't kill him to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hananiah, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Should you have gone to join affinity with the ungodly? Should you have compromised your stand to join 
to go along with an ungodly king and love them that hate the Lord, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. You see the judgment there is a serious thing when you go to join affinity for the people that do not know God. When you go to compromise, when you cannot take your stand because you are afraid of what they will say or what they will do, what will they say? Let them say. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 5. In Romans 2, 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, if we remain stubborn, heady, self willed, and we say, let him talk, that's how he talks. You will read the whole Bible in one sermon. Leave him alone. Hardness of heart. Impenitent heart. You treasure up unto thyself. Wrath against the day of wrath. And revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Then in verse 8. But unto them that are contentious. There's argument in their heart when they hear the word of God. Agitation in their heart. Rebellion in their hearts when they hear the word of God. Unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. But obey unrighteousness. What's the result? Indignation and wrath and tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the gentiles and that's why the lord is warning us and telling us we should not compromise with false prophets neither should we say well i'm there i'm there i'm giving my word i'm go that i'm going to accept i'm going to change the doctrine i'm going to change my lifestyle i just came to this conference already i promised and since i promised them that i'm going to change with them i'm going to go with them i'm going to compromise and they they pumped some words into us and taught us how not to feel guilty they taught us how to be self-willed how to be stubborn and not even think but not look back not be intimidated by what anybody is quoting from the bible and i promise them i am with you i will, will do it like that i cannot go back anymore why not because you will bring judgment upon yourself indignation upon yourself wrath upon yourself in second peter chapter 2 second peter chapter 2 verse 1 but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them they were born again before the lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of you i don't know if you have met anybody that led the church even if it is only one week two weeks they have left and you try to talk to them and you try to say ah sister what happened i heard that you left you're a hypocrite you're just coming to me now you heard that i left okay sit down here see this one this one is wrong this one is wrong. This one is wrong. Who we'll say you don't know? This one is wrong. Even the pastor, you are all of you, hypocrites, pastor, pastor, pastor. Don't you know that man is a backslider? You open your mouth. Uh, you open you want to tell me you don't know? When they talk, your heart begins to beat like this. This is you, you people, worshiping man. Deeper life, deeper life. At, then they poison your mind when you come back you want to pray you cannot pray you want to read bible you are confused then when you get to your house 
after you have visited them and they pump those things into your mind and you are confused when you reach your house somebody knocks at the door and you open the door and it is this man eh, since you visited me i came to visit you and now he talks more and talks more until you yourself say ah i didn't know that it is like this he says okay we are having good meeting this coming weekend come if you are not afraid if you don't come you are afraid of the pastor you are worshiping man if you know you are not worshiping man come to prove that you are not worshiping man you go and when you get there the things you hear except special grace that can bring you back many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnations lumbereth not verse 18 for when they speak great swelling words of vanity they are leal they deceive they lead astray through the lust of the flesh through much wantonness those that were clean escaped from them who live in error while they promise them liberty come for deliverance come for liberty you will know freedom now there's bondage in that deeper life while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for whom a man is overcome the same is he brought of the same is he brought in bondage for if after they have escaped from the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning if you after knowing the truth revealed to you very clearly here this morning if you turn away after you have escaped the pollutions of the world and you are entangled again with compromise you are overcome again with self-will the latter end for you are the worst than the beginning god forbid for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them but it has it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the pig the soul the swine that was washed to a wallowing in the mire my question to you is will you go back i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back though all oppose me yet i will follow no turning back no turning back my friends they depart from me yet i've decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back you know when i remember what the lord has done for me then I tell the Lord, I will never, never turn back again. No. No, no, no. 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 Satan, I will never turn back. No. No. After being saved, born again, child of God, after consecrating my life how can i turn back again no 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 i will never go back i will never go back i never go back anymore i will never go back anymore i will never go back anymore no no my friend no 
false prophets? No. False teachers? No. New ministry? No. Satan? No. No, no, no. I'll never, 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 never go back anymore. He that swears to his own heart and changes not. I give myself to the Lord. I've chosen the way of truth. How can I go back? No compromise, no self-will.